Hey, hey. All righty. What's going on? What's up, dude? How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I am okay. Well, guys, this is another episode of Horror Talk, and I am joined by another close friend of mine, Mike Burns. How are you? Hello. I'm doing awesome. Awesome. Happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hey, you, you do anything today or nah? Nah, we had our dinner yesterday, so we just kind of lounged around today. Nice, nice. Yeah, I went over to Darcy's mom's house and got got all full on some Easter sides and shit. So it was awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, um, I have the golden question as I do every episode. Well, first of all, let me just say, this is another episode of Horror Talk. As y'all know, either we hate it or we love it here. But I, mean, I got to ask the golden question as I do every episode. How did you get into horror? Uh... How I got into horror, well, I've always just been super into movies, and then I didn't specifically really get into horror until I started dating Darcy. So um, I had bought her the Friday the 13th box set as a gift, the DVD one uh, from Best Buy, and then we just, like, went through them, and from then I just kind of got hooked and just started digging deeper and deeper and deeper and just, like, you know, the, the rest is history. I just, it created a monster. I think I remember that box set. Was that the one that had one through eight on it? Yeah, it didn't have the, the other two. It didn't have Goes to Hell and it didn't have Axe. I think it was called Camp Crystal Lake Memories or Camp, something like that. I think I remember it was something from, from Crystal Lake to Manhattan. I remember that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, it was, uh, and then it had a, a bonus disc with a ton of special features on it. Mm, yeah, I, I watched all those documentaries a ton. Yeah, that was a super rad box set. And then, yeah, from there, I pretty much just, like, went through all the big franchises. Some good ones, some terrible ones. Uh, but some of the terrible ones are, like, my favorites now. Like, I went through all the Leprechauns. Um, but the first Leprechaun was a movie I had seen before I was with Darcy. I had seen it as a kid. But I went through the rest of the series and, you know, might have regretted it at the time. But I kind of learned to love those movies. They're hilarious now. Yeah, I find it funny because every time I go to y'all house, you got, like, the Leprechaun poster, and I find it yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's like, the, that's one of those ones from my childhood, too, that, like, I watched with my dad a couple times, and we were just laughing our ass off through the whole movie, and it was just so much fun. Yeah, I'm due for a rewatch of it because I've not watched rewatched it in years, but I don't know. I it's I, just ridiculous to me that I don't yeah. know if I go back and revisit. So I feel like it's a super love it or hate it series because it's not like there's nothing scary about it, even though it is horror. Some of the uh, effects are pretty sweet, but like it's so they're so fucking goofy, and the one liners just get worse and worse. Kind of like unlike Nightmare on Elm Street, where they kind of get funnier and funnier. Yeah, yeah, that's one of them. I will say Leprechaun in the Hood was hilarious. Okay. Dude, that, that's, yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. I remember um, when I was watching Leprechaun, like, for some reason, in the Hood, I, it was on, like, one of the movie channels my family had, like, all the time. It just kept replaying and replaying. So I would watch uh, the first one and in the Hood, like, on repeat all the time. I actually got to tell you because it is a movie that I rewatched, and I got to tell you about it as we get deeper into this because I finally rewatched it earlier today, actually. But I guess I'll ask next: What are some of your favorite horror films? I know you because I've asked yeah. this question before. You like like more like the shocking ones, so I do. Uh, I, I like I like a ton of variety though. Um, so like my top five always is the same, and it's usually like. Um, you know, things move up and down in it. But it's always uh, Dead Alive, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Shining, Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead, and Cannibal Holocaust. Those Ooh. are my five favorite horror movies. You know, it's funny what you mentioned in Dead Alive, Silent Horror Night. I don't know if he's still watching, but he was the one that introduced me to Dead Alive. One of the grossest zombie films my Ever. god yes yes Ever. dude i i love the custard when when the, the mom's ear falls into the custard That's and the, the guy scene that me. <laughs> yeah that oh my god dude that's 
that's what made me like love special effects and just want to dig deeper into like just weird gory stuff <laughs> just find just like the weirdest shit i could find i don't and i think it's like the perfect blend of horror and comedy it's like so looney tunes the whole movie and um you know just what peter jackson did with like shooting with the miniatures and everything it's just like such a crazy accomplishment in film and the fact that it turned out so uh comprehensible is you know astonishing <laughs> yeah that alive i that one and i remember messaging him after i watched it i'm like this was probably the grossest zombie film i have ever what i'm yeah. just that custard scene alone just was i was like just totally and, scarred with that yeah, and then you have just like little things just like the mom stomping on the on the rat monkey or like uh the mom eating the dog like yeah it's it's insane there's just like and then with the baby and then the giant zombies at the end holy mm -hmm. shit. and then and then the party the the, the party at the end yeah. holy <laughs> christ the blood just flies that movie is crazy dead alive is another one of them movies i always say like when you like mitch like because it has a tagline the goriest zombie film ever they're not lying yeah. no uh, not at not all lying. they just let the buckets of blood go at the end with the lawnmower and everything i don't know it's just such a fun movie and it's like i feel like that's my litmus test with friends like if you can at least appreciate something in that movie then i i don't think we can be cool <laughs> it was gross to me so it was like i, I mean i do I have mean, the vhs i do have the vhs yeah. It took me a minute to find the VHS of it, and I found the unrated cut specifically. Oh, sweet. But it's like, it's one of the grossest zombie films to man. That, uh, I, I still haven't found the VHS in the wild. Actually, a friend of mine uh, gave me a copy, my friend Josh, who does like all of the artwork for our podcast and everything. He just gifted me a copy before. It's the R-rated version, so I still got to find the unrated one somewhere. But yeah, I still haven't ran into a copy, and it's like that's like my all-time favorite movie. I always put that as number one. Yeah. So Red it would Texas Chainsaw, a, a, a close number two. Is it now this the original one that is the nineteen seventy four? Okay. Yeah, nineteen seventy four. Because that I don't know that movie's just like so weird to me because it's a weird. It's just like a weird exploitation movie that somehow just found its audience on the drive-in circuit and it just kind of grew from there it's it's just kind of weird watching it now and just seeing how popular it got because i feel like other movies like it um don't get nearly as much recognition but like texas chainsaw kind of was just like the exploitation film that could and just like crash into the mainstream and now you got all these weird sequels to it and i love all the sequels I don't know. They're all just so oddly different. And uh, that series as a whole is probably one of my favorites, including the remakes. The remakes are pretty good. I, the remake and the sequel. And then um, the 3D ones just absolutely trash, but it's super fun to watch. You know what? I liked the 3D one, too, actually. Yeah. I'm mad because I had the 3D glasses when I went to go see it. I kept the 3D glasses for the longest, and I don't yeah. know where they are, but I had kept them for so long because they weren't like your flimsy 3D glasses. They were like yeah. bulky sunglasses at the time, and I wish I would have kept them. I don't know. Yeah, where they're they super are. nice. And we actually still have a 3D TV, like, in our bedroom that uses those kinds of glasses. So I have, like, a, a, in, in a cubby hole somewhere, I just have a bunch of pairs that I had gotten from there. But, yeah, dude, they're super comfortable, like the sunglasses ones. Yeah, they were much better than your normal, like, flimsy 3D yeah. glasses. But sure, I actually sure. liked the Texas Chainsaw 3D. I know that's one that's a hit or a miss for some people, but I, I didn't mind that one. Yeah, I, I don't one. think it's a good movie, but uh, I, I think it's really fun to watch. And there's, like, a couple of huge screw-ups in it that I just think are so funny. Like, just the fact that Alexandra Daddario is supposed to be, like, 38 to 40 years old in the movie according to the timeline and she looks barely 18 <laughs> yeah it's yeah like, that's I just agree. a hilarious mishap and and in the commentary they uh one of the producers actually brings light to it 
and just was like, oh, I hope people just don't notice that. It's like, no, it's kind of the first thing I noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to get on because I know Cannibal Holocaust because I know you talk about this film all of the time. That's like yeah. one of my favorites. So let's I, talk about I it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> I mean, that's like like kind of the opposite of um, Texas Chainsaw. It's like an exploitation movie that doesn't get its just desserts and just like um, for how brutal it is in its metaphorical meaning and um, – how it doesn't shy away from anything. And even though there's like actual animals killed in the movie, like the tribes do use it. And I always just think people should always watch the uncut version of it first. This is kind of like, you know, to see the uncut version, it kind of as a litmus test, uh, Grindhouse releasing did this super cool thing to where they released an animal cruelty free version where they cut all those animal cruelty scenes out of it like all the animal killing scenes. So you just get, um, you know, what's really necessary to the story, which is super cool. I actually don't even watch the one with the animal killings in it anymore because they, they are that fucking brutal. And like, I don't know if I ever feel dead inside, maybe I'll just throw it on to see if I can feel something. But other than that, I just don't see the point to watching that version anymore. Yeah. Me and my mom watched it. We watched that movie. I think last year, she fell asleep by the end of it, like I said, and I watched it, and I was like, yeah. really, you already know how I am, so it's just like, yeah, okay. But I do yeah. feel like that movie, as I always say, they got exactly what they deserved. I didn't feel bad sure. with what they got at all. Uh, that's Yeah, that's yeah. what's so cool about it is, like, I mean, it sucks that they had to kill all those tribal people, you know, within the film and everything, but um, it is really cool that they get exactly what the fuck is coming to them. And um, even so, like, it brings to light when he, when the dude actually, in an actual found footage film, because he finds the footage and then brings it back, just kind of bringing to light how awful this documentary crew is to the people that they were working for that sent them out there in the first place to get this footage. I, I, you know, it's interesting because when I was listening to your guys' podcast, which for anyone that's watching, please listen to the Super Kick Party Massacre podcast. Their podcast is awesome. I, it was you. interesting so the facts that you were, like, talking about the movie because, like, some of them I didn't even know. And it was, like, interesting to, like, listen when you were, like, saying that they, like, had to go into hiding and everything after yeah. filming the film. Yeah, because the... Um the director just wanted it to be so real. So he's like, well, to give the illusion that it's real, I want y'all to go into hiding and I don't want any promotion for the movie or anything. I just, you know, just go into hiding. And it's crazy too, because an extension of that is um, he, the court thought he actually killed people in the movie. So he had to have the actors actually come out of hiding prematurely, bring them to court, prove that they're not dead. And, you know, he, I think he actually had to do the special effects makeup in court to prove that um, it was all fake. It's, it's a movie, you know, it's movie magic. So he almost got prosecuted by, uh, I guess, Italy for the movie. Yeah, that's crazy, the tactics that he, like, used in terms of, like, not so much, like you said, promoting it, but kind of like how he did it. The tactics yeah. were pretty crazy, and that was something. I mean, one thing with Cannibal Holocaust, I will say it wasn't for me, but I understand why it was big at the time it was. I mean, there was no movies like that in 1980 that was out. I so know. It's like, yeah. yeah, that was surreal then because it wasn't no horror movies that was out like that. You had everything else, but to see a found footage film like that, and I will say Cannibal Holocaust is one of a kind. I can at yeah. least admit that I don't too much care for it, but I will say it is one of a kind. That I yeah. can admit. Yeah. For sure. I, I absolutely love it, man. And I don't know, it's like every time I watch it, it just, like by the end of it, just gives me that pit in my stomach, and I feel like that's how you're supposed to feel at the end of that movie. Because it is fucking brutal, and like Pretty much everybody except for the guy that goes to find the footage is an asshole. Like, you, you don't like anybody in that movie. Like, you're rooting for the tribe to fucking murder and eat these people the whole time.
<laughs> yeah, I felt like they started doing too much for me, and it so it was like when they got what they got, I was like, oh well. well. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But yeah, absolutely an excellent movie. And just from the first time I saw it, I remember the exact setting the first time I saw it. Like it was a super hot day. It was like ninety degrees out, and then like that movie, it was you know that movie's just gross and gritty and sweaty. They're just going through the Amazon jungle, and they just look uncomfortable as all hell so like that super helped with uh you know my enjoyment of it i pretty much watch it every summer just because it's just like one of those not like a summertime movie but just like a warm weather movie i got it okay so yeah you know that's it i know you were telling me about the other one what was a cannibal ferox is that the other yeah. one that's like it Okay. Yeah, that I'll one's just know. pure exploitation. It's it's just such a rip off of it. And while a lot, some people do like it better, the characters are way more wild in that one. Um, and everything's just way more in your face. And it's just it's the same exact story as Han Cannibal Holocaust, pretty much, with more over the top characters and stuff like that. It's more memorable, I'll say that, for um, more ridiculousness than like just the absolute brutality of Holocaust. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to check it out. Oh, let me tell you the movie that I watched or I finally rewatched. So I finally rewatched House of the Devil a couple of hours ago. Awesome. What'd you think of it? Okay, so my verdict, okay, I'm still like not in love love with it, but I liked it more this viewing. Than I did years ago when I watched it. That's so cool, man. Yeah, I I love that one. That's one of Darcy's like all time. I think it's in her top five or like an honorable mention or something. But but like uh, it's number two. She just blurted to me from the living room. But yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, like Darcy's obsessed with that movie. I love it. It would probably pop somewhere into like my top twenty. If not, it's a hundred percent like my top. 50 movies of all time i for a, a modern like cult supernatural paranormally type of movie by ty west was such a slow build-up to just be it, it was just so unique when it was coming out because i feel like it was coming out in like the found footage paranormal activity type of thing and then here you have this period piece of that kind of started the whole kind of started the whole a little bit of a cult boom you know what i mean like a ton of cult movies came out after this and uh i don't know just like the care of the filmmaking that ty west took making it really crafting it and not just like throwing everything in your face right away and really building up to everything um the restraint shown in making that movie is just second to none i just love that movie the filmmaking i could just stare at it for the filmmaking not even paying attention to the plot yeah, you know, I I kind of this is a non popular opinion, but I think if I had to compare that between that and X, I actually like House of the Devil a little bit more than I do X. Yes, yeah, I would say I still do. I I, I want to watch X one more time, but if, if yeah, gun to my head, say it right now, I'd probably say House. I like House of the Devil more than X. But the thing is, there's they were both so great for me, too. So it's like, yeah. I don't know, House of the Devil is like a four and a half out of five, and then X is maybe a four out of five for me. And you know what? And I think I will say, like, too, I, like, made a comparison. That was another movie, like, because X, you, I, rem I don't know if you remember me saying when we were leaving, and I'm like, they didn't explain why they were doing it. But it's like, when I watched House of the Devil, it was the same thing. They really didn't explain why they were doing it. So I'm yeah. beginning to believe his movies are just naturally like that. Yeah, yeah just open-ended. Just, like, it, who cares why they're doing it? It's like, they're doing it, and you need to get the fuck out of there you know what i mean it's it's I, I don't think he puts stock into that type of okay let me go over this and explain everything he's more like what you see is what you get and you kind of just fill in the blanks i'm not going to give everything to you type of thing i think she was stupid anyway with house of the devil because when she came up there and said they was creepy she should have been leaving so it was yeah. like, yeah, I would have been leaving when, once I would have got wind up when I first came up yeah. and seen all of that. I would have left. Oh, so. and Darcy brought up something too about X in the comments. She said um, that something's, it, it'll be explained in the prequel. 
because did you stay for the after the credit scene for yeah, us? We stayed, remember? We oh, yeah, that's right. You were with us. Duh. I'm sorry. I'm such a stoner, <laughs> dude. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, so we're, it's all going to get explained in the prequel because they're making it seem like they're going back to the before time to when, you know, they was all young chillins, those crazy old people. I said I'm going to at least watch it maybe one more time. Yeah, I don't, and then I think after that I'm done. But it's like I'll I'll probably watch it one more time just to get my yeah. final thought. I really does anybody know anybody in the comments or something? Does anybody know if it's coming out on 4K or just Blu-ray? Because I would love for that to get a 4K disc release. I would totally buy that I've day been one. I'm seeing on different, you know what? And I've been seeing like different like. T uh, articles because some people said it wasn't getting a 4K and then others was, was saying it was so I'm like I, I don't see why that wouldn't get a 4K release that I yeah. oh the somebody just typed in the chat too the alligator scene <laughs> uh, is it the kill or is it the first scene with the alligator or is it the kill because the kill part the kill yeah. yeah, that I'm like, wow. yeah, but if you remember. Well, the first part with the alligator, that was just for the foreshadowing. You just knew that fucking thing was going to come into play. Yeah, that was brutal. Her death, I was like, oh. Yeah, it just... and it's so funny, too, because Darcy, um, just a, right after we saw X, Darcy just watched Eaten Alive. So that's another alligator, killer alligator movie, which is pretty fucking sweet. You know what? I didn't care for that one. I did no. not care for eating a lot. I watched it. I want to say, I think I watched this movie maybe a week ago. A week or yeah. two weeks ago. I wasn't feeling it. I was no. not feeling it. See, it's, it's, I, I get it. I like. I can explain it like this. I feel like um, he wanted to create Texas Chainsaw Massacre again with the antagonist and the alligator in Eaten Alive. But for some reason, he fucking was like, oh, we'll just make everything half as good. So it, it was, you definitely felt the budget on it. Like, I'm pretty sure some of the sets, I don't know if they were all sets, but like some of the walls that they were even touching were like moving, I, I saw at one point. And it was just a, I don't know, it's just a fun movie. I, I'm just obsessed with exploitation. So anything of that ilk, uh, I could see how some people could see it's boring. But the build up to like the big scenes and those types of movies, I just super enjoy. And then, but if the payoff isn't what I want, it ultimately it gets me really pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? Toby Hooper movies is not for me to begin with. Like I've tried. Yeah. The only one I've really liked by him was The Fun House. That was kind yeah. of. Yeah. Well, I feel like Toby Hooper, just because of the success of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he kind of just got, like, caught in the Hollywood system after that. And he was just, like, a real laid-back, independent film guy from Austin that just didn't really fit in the Hollywood system. And I feel like if he were to just continue making his weirdo independent movies in Austin, he would have made a lot more cooler things than, you know, trying to get jobs and, you know, just kind of getting, you know, eaten, chewed up and spit out in Hollywood. And then you have the unfortunate things of everybody thinks that Steven Spielberg directed one of your greatest fucking movies that you made. So like in Poltergeist, so it's like, well, that's another one. I'm not a fan of. Ugh. Oh no. See, I love Poltergeist. But uh, it, it just sucks. I always feel bad for Toby Hooper in his yeah. career because I feel like if he really were to just stick to independent, um, just kind of messed up, weirdo, grindhousey movies, he'd just have a lot more cool things to talk about rather than going back and forth from independence to Hollywood trying to make it work. Yeah, that's kind of... I don't know. He just He's a hit or a miss for me. I, I mean... Yeah. I totally understand that. Now yeah. I gotta ask you, because, you know, we have this debate all of the time. So your yeah. favorite Friday the 13th is n New Beginning. I just want yes. to know, like, why? So, <laughs> New Beginning, I just... So, it's got... I, I feel like they mastered the Friday the 13th 80s slasher formula in Part 5. And I feel like if it was a different killer and wasn't called Friday the 13th Part 5 and had nothing to do with Jason, it would be so many people's favorite slasher movie. 
It's before the MPAA really got a hold on gore, so there is some really cool gore in it still. They didn't really start hacking and cutting gore scenes out till part six and seven. And then you've got, like, the most memorable characters of the entire series. The only thing I can say is really weak about it is probably the final girl's not super memorable. Mm-hmm. But if, if, I were to, if I were to say... My favorite Friday the 13th is part five for all those reasons I just stated. But I think the best and most well-made one in the series is part two. Because Ginny is just the absolute ultimate 80s final girl. Like, I, I, nobody did it better than her, I don't think, until, like, um, maybe Sydney in the Scream movies in the 90s. I actually, you know what is funny with uh, Friday the 13th, because I always say in terms of the final girl, for me, Jenny is my favorite. And then I must say Trish from part four, I feel like is somewhere in there too. Yeah. Trish is cool. It just sucks because she's super overshadowed by Corey Feldman. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, she was a good final girl. But like, yeah, that's the only weak part about five is Chris just really isn't a great final girl, but you've got like Violet, you've got a whacked out Tommy Jarvis, like who you don't know whether he's gonna like fucking do a karate routine on you or like Mm -hmm. cry on your shoulder. Like the, um, it's just so crazy. And you, the kind of thing like with, um, Lori and Michael Myers or, um, Jamie Lloyd and Michael Myers is like, they would see him when he wasn't there and stuff. So that was also happening to Tommy Jarvis, which was kind of cool. A little bit of, uh, him looking out the window, maybe a callback to Halloween when he sees Jason. So I don't know. I just feel like part five has it all. Like they just took parts one through four, took all the cool parts about it that make, the film's truly memorable and just mash them all into part five. And then there's that you, you got that dude, um, chopping up, um, Afro man in the beginning of it, the dude from return of the living dead. I forget his name, but uh, he was in return Return of the living dead. The dude. Yeah. He's the dude with all the chains on him. The dude that's chopping wood. I didn't even know this. Wow, I yeah. didn't even know this. Yeah. yeah, he's like the main punk in Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, and like, that's the thing. You remember all these characters. You remember the candy bar guy. You remember Violet and her fucking weird dancing to techno music. The which one is like girl, the though, part of that movie. The, oh, I'm trying to think. The girl that gets the bed through the machete when she goes upstairs and goes to bed. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Her or whatever. You know she's in... Uh, She's in Slumber Party Massacre, too. Yes, I think. Um, weren't we just talking about that the other day, Dars? She's in part two. Oh, the girl from Friday Fives in Slumber Party Massacre, too? Yeah, I don't think I realized it until recently. Yeah, we were just talking about that the other day, which is super weird. Yeah, <laughs> I don't she's know. in yeah, part we, two. Yeah, that's super cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, but you yeah, know, I, don't know. I, I think Friday the 13th part five isn't only like the ultimate Friday the 13th. I just think it's the ultimate slasher movie. And it sucks that people just disregard it because it's supposed to be Roy in a Jason suit the whole time. But I don't know. I think that's a like, it's a cool twist too. like, you, I don't know, seeing Jason every single fucking thing coming back and just chopping people up, coming back. Try, it, doesn't that get boring after a while? Don't you want to see people at least try new things with this stuff? Hey, listen, Violet is like what makes five for me. Uh, she does oh, not. Oh, and, um, ooh, oh, Demon. I, why didn't I bring up Demon? And you got Reggie the Reckless, dude. Reggie the Reckless is the man. He's he's one he of the, the final. Man. It's he's him and man. Chris at the end, right? Uh, it's him, Pam, and uh, Tommy. They survive. Him, Pam, and Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris is part Chris three. Is part four. I keep yeah. Oh, no, I Chris keep is thinking. part three. Three. That's three. right. I get them confused because Pam and Chris just I don't know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they were. Uh, I I think I've been calling her Chris this whole time too. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. That that movie's just so rad. I just think that whole series is so cool besides I don't like um I don't like 8. I just think 8's bad. I think it's boring. 
Here we I think go, a- man. <laughs> <laughs> I know you ain't Jason Takes Manhattan, though. I yeah. know, I know that's I, your least favorite. There's a couple of cool parts, but it's like... I don't know. I, I just feel like it takes forever to fucking get to Manhattan, a.k.a. Vancouver, and... The, they're not there for long, and then you get that weird scene with Jason as like a five year old kid naked in an alley in a bunch of toxic waste. Like, what the fuck is up with that? Part eight is the shit. Um, Part eight like, is what, the shit. I agree. But, that was my first one. So, but you got a homie getting his block knocked off. That was super awesome. Uh, he was also a super fun character throughout the whole movie. And then the, I do love the eighties metal montage in the beginning, and then her getting the fucking guitar death. That was really sweet. Yeah. So there's things I like about it. I just think it's the most boring one to me. I just don't think it doesn't get going fast enough. And all the other ones, you have like at least cool, weird jump scares along the way, or like just fun situations with whacked out characters. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I mean, I understand some people hate that one. I think it holds a special place for me at least because that was the first Friday the mm-hmm. Thirteenth I ever watched. So, like, I had a lot of fun with that one. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, nostalgia Jason's always cool. plays a factor. And that's nostalgia is always cool with love in a movie. Um, I don't have nostalgia for that, though. So that's probably why I just don't like it. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. I mean, it's a ton of movies I don't like. Y'all already know. So, what I mean. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm super easygoing when it comes to horror, though. Like, I'm just, I want to love every movie. So I kind of just, like, force myself to love movies sometimes and try to find things I love about them. No, so I can't I, love every movie. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Trust me, there's some that I just can't do. Like, I mean, listen, I love every Friday the 13th movie, which is crazy because there's, what, like 12 of them? Except for one of them. So, like, me not liking one out of 12, I, I fucking love everything. <laughs> I guess that was going to be my next question. So what are some more horror movies that you just absolutely cannot do? <laughs> Besides oh, that can't one. Do. So, so there's there's not really any horror movies I can't do. Um, like I said, I literally will watch everything. Uh, anything from, like, I will watch, like, the Hotel Transylvania sequels with my nieces all the way up to watching, like, gross stuff that nobody should be watching ever. Um, but, so, stuff I... I abs- so... Even though I watch it every 4th of July, the I Know What You Did Last Summer movies, um, those, like, everybody says, like, Scream brought back horror in the 90s, and they're, they're always just like, sweet, you know, they rejuvenated it, and it's kind of like, no, they, they kind of just sprouted a bunch of copycats that were never as good as Scream, and that were kind of bad, but the thing is, I still enjoy watching them even though I think they're really bad movies. Like, the I Know What You Did Last Summer movies, like, nothing makes sense. Every time they, like, find something that the killer did, they go away for 30 seconds, come back, and in 30 seconds, the killer just completely cleaned and sanitized the whole murder scene. It's just like, what? <laughs> I love no, I you... Still No, too. That's a guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah. I actually well, like I Still thing. No more than the first. Yeah, I still, I still love watching them. Like, I'm going to watch Jaws and I know what you did last summer every 4th of July just because it's fun. But like, I don't know. There's Darcy. What movies do I hate? (laughs) I don't think there's a ton. I like hate. (laughs) That's only ones that I like. Yeah. There's ones that Darcy likes that I just like can disregard. Oh, I got one. Hmm. Oh, there was this dumb movie called Hallow's Eve that Darcy loves for some reason. It was made for like, $500 $500 in a roll of duct tape. And yeah. it, it's one of those movies that like has Danielle Harris in it. And she's on the cover, even though she's in it for a minute and a half. She's like the first name on it. Oh, so they went the intruder route where Bruce Campbell was like on the top of it. And he's only like in it for two seconds. And- exactly. They, they did exactly that. Except for the movie was made for like $12 in somebody's like haunted maze that they let somebody borrowed that borrowed a camera from their dad. Mm. 
<laughs> I think I'll be skipping that one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not good. It's it's really just one of those movies. Like you know how you go into Walmart and you see like the ten dollar movies. And don't get me wrong, I have friends that make movies that get into those, and like they're the diamonds in the rough. Um, but like. For the most part, when you go into Walmart and you see those Asylum $10 DVDs, that's kind of like what Hallow's Eve is. Just one of those generic movies that's like 10 bucks that might sell a copy or two at Walmart, but they'll end up sending most back to the distributor because nobody wants it. Yeah, that thing about like, I'm trying to think of another movie that I watched. Oh my God, what was it? I watched Top Marks earlier today. What's up? <laughs> I'm trying to think what other movie that I've... High Tension. I finally revisited High oh. Tension for the first time in years. Dude, dude, dude. What did you think of it? It still holds up. You know what? It's it's on the slower side. I kind of have forgot how slow it was, but it's a lot yeah. tamer. It's a lot more tamer than Inside. Inside just is something I'll never watch again, so I'm good on that. But, oh, yeah? You're not going to watch it every Christmas? It's a no. Christmas movie. I'm going on Inside. <laughs> no. Okay. Never. Never yeah, again. Dude. But High Tension is great, isn't it? The only thing I hate, the only thing I hate, I hate the ending because I don't think it makes any sense. You I don't like, like the twist. Really? Because I don't think it makes sense. I don't think it makes sense that that little girl caused all that damage and shit and, like... It doesn't, I think that I need to rewatch it because it's been years, but like, I'm pretty sure there was a part in it to where like, it was impossible because she needed to be in two places at one time. And I forget what part it was, but it was just like, and the thing is I'd seen um, interviews with, uh, Ella, who was it? Alexandra Aja that made that one? Yes, but well, I did I not it. know he directed that movie. I never yeah. knew that. And and the the reason I know it's bullshit is because he'll never explain the ending. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. That's the only reason. But the thing is, I won't discount that movie. I will still rate that four out of five stars because everything leading up to that was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, everything in that movie is so cool. I never let endings just dictate how much fun I had throughout the rest of the movie, though. So that one's definitely like a four out of five stars. You know what? I, I didn't mind the ending to that movie. You know, I... Yeah. I, I just did. didn't think it made sense when I really went back to think about it. I, I can't remember exact ways in the story it didn't make sense because it's been a few years since I watched it, but I'm due for a rewatch. Probably of like that holy trinity of French extreme horror of like inside Martyrs and that. Because I, I dig Martyrs too. Even though that's a crazy intense movie and a super intense watch. I hope it's better than the American one, because the American one I watched it, that was trash. So, Dude, the, I mean, the other one is, is so brutal. It's it's tough. It sticks with you. I love it, though. <laughs> oh, Darcy, you love cannot Martyrs. say we're all on the same brand, because you know, I see either I'm a hater or I love it, so... People be getting mad at me with my opinions, because yeah. <laughs> as I've been told, mine are unnormal. So oh, I think she was talking about our buddy Josh that's in the chat, too. Oh, you met Josh, right? Did Josh and Cheyenne meet? Oh, no, you'll meet him someday. <laughs> My yeah, he's our buddy from Cleveland. He, he'll come up here and do some of our drive-in nights on the weekend this summer. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm, so that'll I'm be sweet. To think, it was, what did I want to ask you? Oh, my God. Okay, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Okay, so with you like, guys' collection, because I like stare at it all of the time, how did you yeah. guys get into the whole collecting? Uh, oh, dude, that's a pr it's pretty much mostly me. I'm just, I'm a collector. You know, I just, I love movies. I love physical media. I, I love the fact that, like... There's no better picture you can get as of right now besides like a 4K disc and a 4K player on a 4K TV and just getting the whole setup. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm in love with physical media. I love that it, if you can buy it direct from the distributor or filmmaker especially and straight up support them like directly, that's the coolest thing. I love buying movies at like at conventions 
you know, just straight up handing cash to these people because, you know, cash is king and they can do the most with it. And, you know, it, it just gives them more excuse to dig deeper and find wackier shit because, like, a lot of these distribution companies, like, a lot of the big movies have been released and have had multiple releases, on you know, throughout VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, uh, Laserdisc, what have you. And, um, you know, it's, it's just like, they're not going to keep releasing this stuff because it's selling less and less unless we support it with our dollars. So I, I just, I don't know. I really love it. I just love collecting. And that's how I find out about movies. It's how I used to do it as a kid going into, um, rental stores and stuff like that. Just getting stuff based on the covers and maybe reading a little bit on the back of it. And I still like doing that. So I kind of try to buy all of my movies at conventions too. Like mm. I, there's something I still don't like buying shit online. I don't like just going to Amazon and being like, boop there, unless it's the only way I can get a movie. That's what I do. But really? yeah, I don't like Amazon. I, I like going to vinegar syndrome or Severin or synapse films or something like that. And just like grabbing something off the table, maybe having a little chat with somebody that, you know, is slinging these things and, Get, get recommendations from them too, like from live people just standing there shooting the shit about movies. There's there's no nothing in the world that can beat that. That's why conventions are so cool, just like talking about movies. Yeah, that's why I'm hoping to go to Niagara Falls Comic Con convention in June. I'm so. Oh yeah, dude, you're you're coming with us. Yeah, I'm so we're, excited. We're going. I got it. I'm like I'm like so excited to meet Nick Castle. Like that. That's so sweet, dude. That's yeah, a he's such a cool dude man. too. Oh, yeah. We got to meet him, uh, like, right before the pandemic. We got to meet him in Indianapolis at a horror hound, and he was a sweet dude. Yeah. Yeah, Halloween is, You're like, my all-time favorite horror movie, so it's like... Yeah. Oh, I yeah. have many more, but, like, Michael Myers is the GOAT for me, so... I get what you goat. mean, man. I don't know. It's something, like, even when you compare it to other slasher series, I, I don't know. I think the Halloween series is just so fun and special, Kind of like how I feel about the Texas Chainsaw series. Like, they go off on such wild tangents and paths sometimes that it's just kind of funny and just so outside of the box. Um, I don't know. It's just really cool. Now, I got to ask, because uh, let's talk about your favorite Halloween film for a moment. Halloween 5. Now, I just want to oh, <laughs> come I on, just wanna get into I... why you hate this film. Uh... You know it's your favorite one, so we got to talk about this for a minute. <laughs> I just think, listen, listen, I get it that <laughs> when you get to Halloween 5, I get that you're on Halloween 5. Like, it's not going to be the best film in the series, but I just feel like it, it's some French douche that directed it or something. I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> but I'm just like, there's no care put into that movie at all. Like, nobody gave a shit about Michael Myers in that movie. Nobody gave a shit about the characters. Nobody gave a shit. That's the thing. I just feel like I don't see love in that movie when I watch it. Uh, I just, I just don't get my, it. Uh, Halloween 6, your favorite one is the worst. Oh, no. I, oh, my God. See that? I, I see that. I see that. Darcy just goes, Michael is going to take that personally. And I do take that personally because I think 6 is like the second or third best in the series. Um, and And I think it sucks because there's not a definitive version I can point at and say that that's the perfect movie, but there is a perfect mix between the theatrical cut and the producer's cut that makes complete sense. And I, I wish I was talented enough to be able to make my own super cut of it because there is something in there. And it's funny because part five actually does plant the seed at the end of it for like the man in black and the cult of thorn and stuff like that. So um, I can't completely hate on five because I, I do really like six. And I, I think thought six that storyline was stupid. The, the man in black like that, I never understood. 
Yeah, I get it. But, like, where are you going to go with it? Are you just going to have Michael Myers just go to suburbia and do the same fucking thing over and over again? We we just had that with these last two Halloween movies. Like, the same old, same old Michael going after and slashing up kids. And people are, like, split 50-50 on it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like I, I feel like half the people want the same thing over and over again. And then half the people are like, all right, you want to do something different? Let's just dive deep in on this and go all in, and then let's just see how I feel about it coming out. And I don't know. I, I, I kind of respect people for doing wacky things like that, like Jason Goes to Hell or, like, Halloween 6, or just, like, trying to take it somewhere. And you're never going to get a great reception from people that like the first one. You're on the sixth movie, for Christ's sake. You're not half of your audience is gone. So, I mean, it's not one of those movies. That's not one of those sequels. I love it, but I don't hate it either. Mm-hmm. Halloween 6, I, I like to call it, that's a film I'm just neutral. I'm neutral. Yeah. If I had and I like, think Paul I'm, Rudd is just crazy in that movie. Ugh. Like, his character is just insane. He's just, like, some sort of weird, obsessive, like... Uh, he's got something a little wrong up here, but like means well type of creepy dude. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, there's all the there's all the twists and turns too, like the old lady and stuff. That was fucking hilarious. I, I was gonna say, um, you know what? Paul Rudd is horrible in that movie. We can agree on that. But Anthony Michael Hall, I think, was even worse than <laughs> Halloween Kills as Tommy. So Unfortunately. I think I'll take Paul Rudd, honestly, over him. I was so disappointed in that Halloween Kills movie. I, I just thought... This, I'm an Anthony Michael Hall fan, too, and not just from the Brat Pack stuff, but, like, he was great in Edward Scissorhands as a heel character. He was great in... Like, he's hilarious and Freddy Got Fingered as fingered as an asshole, like, corporate um, studio head character. I don't know. It's, I I was really hoping for something good, but it Halloween Kills just turned into a stinker with really cool music and really rad gore. I wasn't a fan of it. I, as I've said, I, wasn't either. I was so disappointed. And that was a movie I was so hyped for. And then it was like, we got it. And it was like, what? Like, no, like, this is not good, like... Yeah, I don't know, uh, that's the thing, it's like, I don't know, I like, I like how Michael Myers was, and how intense he was, I like the kills, the, I absolutely, I think these are the best Halloween scores since the original Halloween, um, with Cody Carpenter and John Carpenter, and then I think they have another partner they work with, but I, I love the music. I'm still buying the records. Like, I'm, I still haven't bought Halloween Kills on, on disc yet. I know I will once it's on sale, but that's how much I didn't really care for it. Like, I'm a collector, and I'm going to have it to complete the collection. But, um, yeah, no. I, I'm not going to get it for, like, a long time until it's, like, 10 bucks or something. Yeah, I did, like, the uh, the soundtrack to these newer films are awesome. I thought the H2018 soundtrack was really good. It was awesome. That's, really like, one good. of my favorite soundtracks of the last, like, four or five years. Like, it, it's just so, like, it's intense and, um, like, kind of giallo-esque like from those old school giallos like that would throw like really heavy guitars and rock sounds in it and stuff it was just super rad yeah yeah i agree oh uh, what was i gonna ask um so did you the you didn't i'm assuming you didn't get the steel book to that yet or halloween no thing? okay no i got the, i got the steel book for halloween 2018 because i ended up finding it for like 10 bucks or something on sale uh, the 4K ones, so I, I ended up scooping that up. But I, I actually, I wasn't a fan of 2018 when I first saw it. I'm, like, so-so on it now. i probably give it, like, a three out of five stars. It's a pretty good movie. Um, But I, I, I think just Kills was a huge yeah. step down. I don't know. I'm going to watch Halloween. T- I've only seen Halloween 2018 twice. I saw it when it came out in theaters, and then I saw it the following year, um on Halloween, and then so it's been, it'll be three years this upcoming October, so I'll give it another watch. 
Yeah, it's crazy because I remember when that movie was coming out, and that was kind of like when I first like started like being on Instagram and like kind of started getting into the horror community. And I remember everyone being excited for that film. That was it's hype, man. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, because yeah. I try to not watch trailers or like if I can avoid it, I don't even want to see an image from the movie, especially for something called Halloween because it's called Halloween. You have my money. I don't need to know anything about it. Is Michael Myers in it? Fucking rad. Is he not in it? And you're doing a silver shamrock thing. Even better. Like you already have my money. I don't need to see a trailer. I don't need to see what Michael Myers looks like. And I was pissed because that image of Michael Myers grabbing through the door, grabbing like Lori through the door. That was like the first image that came out and it was everywhere. And I was so pissed about it. Cause I'm like, dude, that's a jump scare. Like, straight up, that's going to be a jump scare with his hand coming through the door. You just ruined that for me. And when it happened in the theater, I'm like, sweet, this is the jump scare that they ruined for me. Oh, there it is. So <laughs> I, I just don't like to see any fucking, like, promotional anything because it's like, is there a horror movie coming out? Can I afford to see it in theaters? Sick. I'm going to go see it. Yeah, I know you like, you love, I, like, it's funny because, like, every time a movie comes out and I ask you about the trailer, you're like, nope, didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah. didn't watch it. I don't watch it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just surprise me. I just like being surprised. And I feel like that's a great way to go into movies this day and age because there's so much behind. If, if, I, if I love a movie, too, that's even more research I get to do and figure out things that I didn't even know. You know what I mean? Then I can dig into the production and why I love this movie so much and how they came about with the stories and everything like that. So it's like, I get, I'm such a fan. I get enough of the behind the scenes stuff. I don't need to see a trailer. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And the way yeah. that we have trailers now and they kind of show everything, I get everything. It. I because they're not, trying, they're not trying to get me and you in theaters. They have our money. They're trying to get average Joe that, like, isn't going to a Michael Myers movie because he's like, oh, I don't know. But then he sees a trailer and sees a cool scene. And he's like, oh, it's, it's to try to push the people on the fence about it. They already know they got my money. They don't need to fucking throw that in my face. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I, that's what I watched. I watched <laughs> Toxic Avenger Part 2 yesterday. And oh, I yeah? gotta say, yeah, I like the first one more. Yeah, that one was kind of weak. Uh, yeah, two and three play. are like... I guess what happened was was they had a bigger budget because Lloyd Kaufman got some um, funding from a Japanese company or something. But since they were giving him so much funding, they, that's the one that has a ton of Japanese influence in it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I guess they gave him a ton of funding, and then they wanted him to put certain things in the movie and do certain things with the movie. And since it wasn't his trauma money, he kind of had to listen to some things and, like, give in to some of their wishes. So that's what happened with 2 and 3. It's just because they're, like... They're made by Lloyd and they're trauma movies, but he got funding from somebody else that he needed to listen to on certain things or else the funding would be pulled. And I guess after that, he was just like, nah, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So yeah, two and three are rough. Four is wild as hell. I think it's really fun, but it's really, really gross. So just know that going into four. Three, if you didn't like two, I think three is kind of like a chore to get through. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of two. I was like, oh, the first one was so good. And then yeah. I'm like, this one is like, nah, no. One and four. One and four are the ones to watch in that series. I can't wait for the reboot, though. I, I don't even know when it's coming out, though. But I know they've been working on it. And I think Macon Blair is directing it um, of Blue Ruin fame. So have you seen Blue Ruin? I have not. Ugh. That's a solid movie. It's more of a thriller but um, it's a really cool movie if you ever – I think it was streaming on Netflix for years, but they pull shit all the time, so who knows if it's on there. Yeah, I had a blast with Toxic Avenger, so it was like – but I oh think for God. that, I think I'll stay with the first one and just – that's yeah. And yeah, watching it in the theater, too, is just so much fun. I've watched – like, that's one of those movies to where, like – if my friends come over and they're like, yo, find something ridiculous for me to watch. There's a couple, like there's a movie called the Velocipaster that I'll put on and a couple other ridiculous horror movies. But then like, if, 
Because tax tax fake avenger can be pretty offensive to people. So I try to ease them into it. And then once I get like two, three innocent like gag movies in and they're like really enjoying it, then I, you know, throw on the Toxic Avenger and introduce them to Uncle Lloyd and then eventually try to bring them up to Poultrygeist. You did it for me with that movie. I, know, I, I don't killing. know. I wasn't that. I, is, that was Thanks Killing you watched. Oh, uh, uh. yeah. That, come on. That movie was so much fun, though. It's so bad and so <laughs> dumb, but that's the charm of it. Nobody. Oh, my God. Th- those movies are so few and far between, like making them that good. Um, on purpose. Yeah, I, I ain't had no comment with Thanks Killing. I was like, you know what? No I feel it did its in. job then. No I, I absolutely in. feel it did its job. But I mean, <laughs> that's a movie you can't even take seriously. Just by the title alone, it was like, exactly. I knew what exactly. to expect. Yeah. yeah. So from, yeah, so from like frame one, you're just like, all right, ridiculousness. Let's, well, from the first frame is the titty. So, like, what do you, you know what you're in for from the first frame. Yeah, and I, no, because I've listened on the podcast, that movie has nerve enough to have sequels. You, I think I remember from you saying. There's one sequel. There's one sequel. It's, um, it's called Thanksgiving. Is it part three? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Thanks, or sorry, Thanksgiving three. And they're looking for the last copy of Thanksgiving two in the movie. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no comment with that movie, no comment whatsoever with Thanks Killing, but hey, it is, I mean, I guess it's one of those movies, if you're like super drunk or whatever, you just put that away. Oh, hell yeah, that's, that's exactly good. what it is. Yeah. It's exactly like you're having a good time with your friends and you're like, you don't want to like bring the mood down, man. You want to have some fun. You want to put something ridiculous on. Everybody's getting loose, you know, maybe smoking a little, drinking a little, you know, you, you throw on Thanksgiving around the, you know, the year of the um, atrocities that happened to the native people in this country. Now, you did it for me with that movie and the other movie. And I remember that was the first time I ever went to y'all house. You put on blades that movie, Blades. you know what? That too, I was like, really? Mm. I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> I had just gotten that in the mail, I think, earlier that day. Um, because I do the Vinegar Syndrome subscription, so they just send me, like, anywhere from, like, three to five movies a month. And uh, that was just part of my subscription package, and it came in the mail that day. And I was like, wow, this looks ridiculous. If we have time and people are still hanging out, I'm going to put it on for the second movie. And it didn't disappoint. It was it was wild. A killer lawnmower. Yeah. I, you know, but I will say Vinegar Syndrome, I don't mind them. I do have a couple. I think I have about three or four movies in my yeah. collection from them. So play I really like really them. Fun one. I, I own probably too many of them. I probably own like 150 of their movies, but they just... That's if if you ever wanted to know like my personality in movies, it's like what Vinegar Syndrome releases. Just goofy stuff all over the board. It might not even be horror, but it's so ridiculous. It might as well be horrific. I, I don't know. I just I love all the gems that they find. And even when they come out with movies that I really don't like, um, the special features that they have, they always have a ton. They're, you know, like one of those cool boutique labels that just always loads up their releases. And if you don't like the movies, they always hold their value. So if you get them during a sale for like 17 to 20 bucks a piece, usually when they'll all be out of production, you can sell it for double. Mm, Yeah, that's crazy. I have a couple of them in my collection myself. So I will say I like Scream Factory a little bit more, but I don't mind. Yeah. uh, I don't mind Vinegar Syndrome. I well, Scream have- Factory gets some heavy hitters. They get some really good movies. I'm not a huge fan of how they handle things, but sometimes when they get... Like, they they release one of my all-time favorite movies, Slumber Party Massacre, and, I mean, they keep re-releasing it, which is awesome, because I can always use an updated version, uh, updated restorations of that movie, because I, I absolutely adore that one. They came out with the Steelbook not too long ago of a yeah. 4K restoration, and I upgraded my regular Blu-ray. 
to it. So yeah, I have the original VHS of that movie. One of my favorites. One of my <laughs> favorites. So I, I we don't. We we got a a bootleg made of that one. Uh, Darcy got one made for me for Christmas a year or two ago, and then um, we have we have part two on VHS though because that one's super fun too. Yeah, and I found that for twenty dollars on Facebook. The second one, it was That's a dude that was selling it for twenty dollars, and I was like, I just went with it. I was like, all right, yeah. I think that's around what we got it for because we were specifically looking for it and we were just like, ah, whatever. We'll just pay out the ass for it. We, yeah. That's oh, never thing, mind. Like, we, I'm we like a stickler with VHS. Like the most I'll go is 30. Like when it's getting in 40 and 50, and I'm not paying that. No. Yeah. I've, no. I've only paid above $50 for one of my VHS tapes and it's one of the dumbest fucking movies I've ever watched. It's called Blood Freak and it's about... <laughs> Um, a drug addict who turns into a killer turkey and needs to suck the blood of junkies in order to get high. What the hell? Wow. Yeah, no. Do with that information what you will, and please enjoy. Yeah, I I found a sealed copy of it, and um, I, I just messaged the dude. I knew what it was worth, and I was just like, can you please be gentle with a price for me? Because I really want this fucking movie, and I don't think you're going to get anybody else as interested as I am in it. So that I think I ended up getting it for $40 with $10 shipping, so I paid like 50 bucks for it. Yep, won't be watching it. I already know. <laughs> won't be watching it. Won't be watching it. Okay, well, y'all, we got any questions up in here? Because they're going to end this soon. But no, I, I, one thing I've noticed with you, Mike, though, I will say you're a different kind of horror fan because you like like more the obscure titles that, like, yeah. it's okay to like the notable ones, but I've noticed with you, you like like more the, like, the really, like, shocking, obscure horror movie titles. For sure. Like, mm-hmm. and, and the thing is, it's not even that. Um, listen, the classics are classics for a reason. I love the classics. I watch the classics all the time. I'm, I'm not too good to throw on any Nightmare on Elm Street movie at any point. I absolutely love the big franchises, but I just love digging deep. Like, um, I will throw on, you know, what, what are the popular movies I throw on? Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, I throw on all the time. I throw those on regularly so like but i just like throwing down with vinegar syndrome and just really like just digging deep i post more of the obscure stuff because i want other people to find it that's understandable yeah i mean y'all put me on the inside so i mean yeah it's a great one so hey Hey, shaim we got a we got a question on here about uh zombievers somebody asked if we dug zombievers have you seen that one I have not seen this one. No, it's super fun. It's um, it's a new movie. It came out, like, maybe, what, 2016, 2017-ish, maybe. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's a horror comedy, and it's super ridiculous. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's zombie beavers, and it's mad fun, dude. You could probably find a Blu-ray copy for, like, 10 bucks or under. I think it was a pretty cheap buy when I got it. Mm, I'll have to look at this. Zombie beaver? Yeah. Zombie I already know what went into it. It's all ridiculous, but I'll check it out. Oh. Yeah, for sure, man. You have to. Anybody else got any questions on here? Uh, question for both. What are your fa- What is your favorite horror film? Uh, I I said it earlier. My favorite horror movie is Dead Alive, but it can change. Like it's like just above Texas Chainsaw Massacre from '74, the original. But Dead Alive is usually what is what I'll say is my favorite. Halloween for me, for sure. It, I gotta go with the granddaddy. I mean, I there's no... I don't think there's any movie that gives me a better feeling than watching Halloween in October. Like, I don't you, think... There, there's nothing like it. You know, I could watch it all year round. It's one of those. Absolutely. But, so, but the thing is, though, there's nothing more special than, like, finding it on, like, a little breezy day. You hear the leaves outside and shit, and it's just, like, the perfect atmosphere to watch it. There's just nothing like that. Yeah, I agree. Like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not at all too good for the big ones, man. I love, I love the big horror movies. 
Ooh, awesome. I will check out Dead Alive. Yeah, Dead Alive is crazy. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, so Darcy's saying um, to recommend a um, horror movie that we haven't talked about yet. So um, that's probably for both of us. So do you want to recommend something? Uh, uh, oh, it's for me, Darcy? Oh, she's asking for me. <laughs> so what would I suggest? So right in front of me, I have some stuff. And okay. Well, I have a stack. That's why I'm sitting here some stuff. So um, I'm going to recommend something. It's a bit of a rough watch. So I'm going to recommend two things. So this is for people that um, like the martyrs type of people. Like if you enjoyed stuff like martyrs or inside or like high tension or stuff like that, stuff that's a little more edgy. Um, there's this movie called The Seasoning House that I'm a big fan of. And it's really thrillery. It's grindhousey. It's dark as hell. And it's about a deaf mute girl that um, is taken captive from her family during war times. And um, she is basically an assistant in a brothel that they... Um, all of the girls that are in this brothel are essentially held captive there and they're hooked on heroin so they won't leave. So they'll still be there. But this deaf mute girl ends up, you know, befriending one of them and, you know, they try to break their way out of this place. Um, and it, it's a really brutal movie. If like in my description, just, um, just know that it's as bad as you can think it is on screen. So just trigger warnings for everybody. There's, um, there's violence towards women in this movie. And um, there is a rape scene in this movie. So go in with caution. So that's one, like, if, if you're into this type of thing, you know if you are or not. If you're not, please don't watch it. I don't want people to be mad at me for watching things like this. But like I said, like nothing's off limits when it comes to my horror watching. I just try to find something I like. And as fun or as extreme as it may be, you know, I just love what I love, I guess. And that's nothing wrong with that. There's yeah, no so that's a super cool movie, and I, I try to sing my praises on it because I don't hear many people talking about it. Um, and let me – an easier one. Josh, Josh. Uh, all right, so recommend another movie. You know what I'm going to recommend? I'm going to recommend Bliss. Um, Have you seen Bliss? Is that on Shudder? Yeah, it was a Shudder exclusive, I believe, when it I came out. I have not out. watched it. I've seen it around on here, however. Okay, so Bliss is a trippy drug movie, and it's made by some... It's made by this whacked out, out-of-his-mind artist called Joe Bagos. He's done, like, Almost Human. He did VFW. Have you seen VFW? That was good. Yeah, so it's the same tone, man. It's the same, like, wacky colors and stuff. It, this one's more trippy than that, and but the soundtrack is awesome. It's just, like, I, I don't know. It, it, it's one of those movies that I watched, and the second it ended, I just straight up started it over and watched it again because I just loved it so much. The um, the, the main actress in it is... Um, just one of a kind. She's written one of a kind. She's just so badass and just like doesn't take shit from anybody and is the type of character to where she's her own worst enemy as well. So like it's and she's an artist and it sucks because the type of movie, it, if I tell you what type of movie it is, it would actually spoil it. But um, okay, I'll check it out. I'll it's a trippy kind of druggy move. Trippy drug druggy artsy, very fun, very fun. Just like if you get past the if you're not feeling it by the time the credits end because the credits are wild and that's what you're in for, you might as well shut it off. Bl oh, Bliss okay. is so much fun. 
I, I just want everybody to watch it. And I feel like that's not talked about enough either. Even though I know a lot of people have seen it, I feel like nobody talks about it. Mm. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to check that out. Uh, we'll answer the last question here. Uh, I seen Terrell had uh, any Easter horror movies. Oh, that's great. I actually came prepared for this because I have a stack of Easter horror movies right next to me. So, so probably, I don't know, my favorite, um, it's a dumb movie. It's so dumb. Uh, it's called Bunny Man. You know. And we, uh, it, it is so bad. It's like it's like one of those super micro budget indie movies made in like the late two thousands that's super digital but like not ten eighty p like really bad digital and like Jesus I don't know there's something about those movies and I have the sequel right here that I just got from Amazon yesterday the Bunny Man Massacre it's so bad it's a so bad it's good movie. Um, there's so much blood in it, though. It's really fun. The characters are all stupid, and it's one of those things to where you literally laugh at every single decision that's made because they're literally the exact opposite decision of any rational human being should make. Um, no, but then I'm there's not another. Yeah, you're not gonna watch it. I don't nope. blame you, honestly. Do not blame you. Um, but then here's another one, and I know a ton of people have seen it, but it's not the whole movie. But the short in holidays with the Jesus Easter Bunny. Come on, am I am I introducing you to this too now? Nah, I never you, heard of this. Nah, nah go. <laughs> you gotta yeah. watch it. You gotta watch it now. There's um, most. I'd say about half the shorts are good, and half of them are not so good. But um, yeah, check out. I got it from the Dollar Tree, so maybe check out your Dollar Tree for this movie. Yeah, the um, Dollar Tree. You can find some good pickups, depending. Yeah, yeah, but but there's an Easter short in here, and it's like um, a Jesus Easter bunny, and he looks terrifying as shit. Okay, it's, it's one of that's one of my favorite two shorts in the movie. There's that one, and then there's a Father's Day one that I'm like obsessed with. Um, but yeah, for Easter horror, that's it. Besides your like typical critters too, um, stuff like that. I love watching Willy Wonka on Easter. That's a childhood favorite of mine. Um, Darcy and I. We're just in the middle of watching Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Just because of the chocolate and the candy and I don't know, it's just Easter to me. You know I what I mean? I thought the book more. I thought the book. Oh, more by more. by Roald Dahl? Yeah. I have the book somewhere. I, I read it a few times when I was a kid. I, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Willy Wonka, I just absolutely love that movie. That's a must watch every Easter. I'm pretty sure I, I either throw on the tape or um my Blu ray every single Easter of it. Yeah, that's a that's a childhood. That's like childhood favorite. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah we know. got uh, Nick you know Orphan that? over here saying, "Help, police, murder." Good old, uh, good old Willy Wonka line. You know, it's crazy because in a way that con is considered. I always considered it a horror movie, somewhat, only it because it starts off with like a group of people, and the group just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's a slasher, and, and the slasher is the factory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I what agree. it is. They're picking the kids off one by one. It's great. And the thing is, Willy Wonka doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> he doesn't care about those kids. It's so hilarious just how... And, like, dude, the tunnel scene in that movie, I don't know. It was one of those things, like, when I was a kid, I was super scared of it, but I was always just, like, I couldn't take my eyes off the TV, but it freaked me the fuck out. It's It's just, like... That and, like, Wizard of Oz I considered, like, the first horror movies I ever watched because the Wicked Witch from the West scared the shit out of me when yeah. I was a kid. I yeah. was definitely... I had... The only reoccurring nightmare I remember from when I was a kid was me getting, like, chased by her, and it scared the shit out of me. Ah, you were scared of that? Well, I mean, I do... That's Dude, why I, yeah. I gotta go to Freddy's Dead for a minute, because I thought that was funny when he did the witch part. Yeah, that dude, I hilarious. love Freddy's Dead. Uh, that movie is ridiculously funny. I love that movie. Mm, definitely. Well, yeah. guys, I think we're going to end this soon. I want to thank my guest, Michael Burns, for being on thank so you. much. Definitely so a much dear fun. friend of mine. Please check out him and Darcy's podcast, The Super Kick Party Mass Massacre. If you like horror movies, it's definitely for you, even if you like wrestling. 
is for you because they're huge wrestling fans too. Huge please, wrestling fans. Please check out their podcast. This was another episode of Horror Talk where we hate it or love it. Thank you so much for being on, Mike, and I'll see you Thank soon. You. Again. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.